Okay, 4.3 relations, functions, and graphs. We're using standards MA 912 AR 2.4, 4.4, 9.10, and then F 1.2. We're going to identify the domain and range of a relation, determine whether relations are functions, use function notation, and evaluate functions, identify the domain and range of a function, determine intervals on which functions are increasing or decreasing. Identify even and odd functions. Identify and graph step and other piecewise defined functions. Some definitions, remember that a relation is any set of ordered pairs. The domain is gonna be the first component of an ordered pair, normally known as your X values. The range is the second component of ordered pair, known as your Y values. The function, it's a relation in which ordered pairs do not have the same X value. So in example two, it says decide if it's a function. So they gave it to us as an input output situation here. The input values are A, B, C. Input is also the same thing as saying a domain. Output is two, three, four, which is the same thing as saying the range. So we did is we created ordered pairs. A went with the two, B went with the three, C went with the four. Since every single one does not repeat, there's input A, input B, input C, and now they're repeated. We are a function. Then we go to B. B, they gave us an input situation of A, B, C, and the outputs are one, two, three, four. So if we write them as ordered pairs. The A went to the one, B went to the one, B went to the, C went to the one, actually. Since all three of these went to the same output, but did not repeat, again, this is also a function. When we look at the next one, the X inputs, three, four, five, and three, the outputs one, three, four, and two. So we have an order pair of three, one, four, three, five, four, and three, two. The minute we saw the input value of three repeated twice, this is not a function. Which means that this would not pass the vertical line test. The vertical line test is a way to check if a set of ordered points on a rectangular coordinate system is a function. So in example three, they gave us three these plotted points. And basically to know if it is a function or not, you're taking, you can take a straight edge and draw vertical lines down your paper. And if your vertical line does not hit the point in more than one location, it passes the vertical line test, which means this is, yes, a function. When we look at this example on the next one, the B, we have our circle and then a line is going down through two points and hitting it in two locations. Because of this, this is not a function. It does not pass the vertical line test. When we look at C, it is a curved graph, which means that if I were to take a straight edge and draw a line straight down, I will never hit the graph at more than one location, which is what we want. So this one is, yes, a function. So vertical line tests will verify. You can have any type of domain and ordered pair, but the vertical line test will prove if it's a function or not. Function notation, known as f of x. f is the name of the function, x is the domain or input value, f of x is the range or output value. So for examples, four and five, it says let g of x equal three x minus x squared. And they want us to find each value of the function. What they want you to do is evaluate the function g of x, three x squared minus x squared to whatever they want you to find. So in part A, they want us to find g of two. So you're taking your g of x equation and they want us to find g of two, which means 
the two is in the slot position of the X. So I'm gonna do three parentheses two minus parentheses two squared. You are evaluating it for the number to the right of the evil sign. So using order of operation, three times two is zero six minus, and in parentheses, two squared becomes a four. So then six minus four is a two. So when they say G of two, the result is a two value. I can also convert this into an ordered pair. When X is two, the Y component is a two. Now they want us to find G of zero. So you're gonna do the same thing. You take your equation, G of X equals a three X minus X squared. Now we're gonna do G of zero. So three times zero minus a zero squared. Well, that gives you zero minus another zero. So your answer is zero. So G of zero is zero. Our ordered pair is zero, zero. Okay, increasing, decreasing, and constant functions. So a function is known to be increasing on an interval when for any x of one and x of two in the interval, x of one is less than x of two, which implies that the f of x of one is less than the f of x of two. A function is decreasing on an interval when for any x of one and x of two in the interval, x of one is less than x of two, which implies that f of x of one is greater than f of x of two. A function is known as constant on an interval when for any x of one and x of two in the interval, f of x of one is equivalent or equal to f of x of two. So in example eight, it says describing end behavior. Determine the open intervals on which the function is increasing or decreasing. So they gave us this graph, which is a function f of x equal to x cubed minus 3x. So when we look at the graph, this graph is going to the left. So this way is negative infinity. And notice it from the x value. Remember, we're dealing with the domains. From negative infinity all the way, this is to the point negative 1. It is going in an in, it's going in an increasing pattern. So we are saying that it is increasing from negative infinity to negative one. Then it does a turn and decreases between the intervals of negative one and positive one from negative one to positive one. So it's now decreasing from negative one to one. And then it did another turn up from positive one to infinity. So it's again increasing from one to infinity. Piecewise defined function is defined by two or more equations over a specified domain. So it means the domain is having boundaries. So example of says graphing a piecewise defined function. So they gave us a function f of x equal to 2x plus 3 when the values of x are less than or equal to 1. And then f of x equal to negative x plus 4 when the x values are greater than 1. So how do we go about solving a problem like this? So you are going to graph each of these equations individually and then using the boundaries as the constraints. So first thing it says, f of x is equal to 2x plus three. So you can do a t-table. And notice it says all the values of x have to be less than or equal to one. So I'm gonna use a one, a zero, a negative one, a negative two, but it's telling me that all the x values have to be less than or equal to one, which means all your x's are negative. And we're plugging in. So we see two times one plus three. So that gives you a five. So we have an ordered point at one comma five. Then you're gonna plug in a zero. So two times zero is zero, plus three is a three. So we have a point at zero, three. Then we're gonna plug in negative one. Two times negative one is negative two, plus three is a one. So at, when x is negative one, the y is one. 
we are going to plug in negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 3 is negative 1. So when x is negative 2, the y value is negative 1. So we're going to plot the first four points. And notice that it stops at 1. So in the past, when you sketched graphs, you would extend to positive and negative infinity. But this boundary causes a piecewise function to occur. So we have a point at 1, 5, and I put a solid dot because it is telling me that it's closed because of the solid line underneath it. Then we have a point at 0, 3, which happens to be the y-intercept, then negative 1, 1, then negative 2, negative 1. So we have a graph that is extending from there to negative infinity. It has a stopping point. It does not exist beyond that point. Then we go to our second equation. The second equation says f of x equals negative x plus 4. And now notice that all the x values are going to be greater than 1, which means it's now an open statement. So when I go to pick my x values, they're going to be greater than 1. Greater than 1. So I'm going to put 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have negative in parentheses. I'm going to put the 1 plus 4. So negative 1 plus 4 is a positive 3. So when x is 1, y is a 3. Negative, and then I'm going to put 2 in parentheses, plus 4. It's negative 2 plus 4. That is a 2. So when x is 2, y is 2. Negative parentheses of 3 plus 4. Negative 3 plus 4 is a 1. So when x is 3, y is 1. Negative of 4 plus 4 means it gives me a 0. So when x is 4, the y is 0, which happens to be an x-intercept. So again, remember, we are an open statement for the second graph. So when we plot our points at 1, 3, you're going to use an open circle. It is an open circle. Then we have 2, 2, 3, 1, 4, 0. And then we extend our graph. And that one is going to negative infinity that round. So we are closed here. We are open on the next one, which means all the values here will more than likely work for the bottom equation. And here, all the values will work for the top equation, including the one. Here, the one actually makes it a false statement.